I am Lori Gemmel Arp. Can you hear me okay? Excellent. I'm the Director of Collection Services and Community Supported Software at Lyricis. Give you a dollar if you know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I do is manage our open source programs, collection space and archive space. And I'm here to welcome you to our third annual Archive Space Member Forum. We're so pleased that this has become an annual event. How many of you here were, were there two years ago when we had the first one in Cleveland? That's pretty good. And last year in Atlanta? Excellent. Not going to raise your hand to see if you're here. How, who's coming next year? Yes. yes. <laughs> so we're excited to be in Portland, and we particularly appreciate Portland State and their help for um, hosting this event. I'm sure there's a story behind that giant fish. Whale? Is it a whale? Okay, it's a whale. There's a story. And particularly, a special thank you to Doug, I'm going to mispronounce, Kenneck Crispin, the PSU events coordinator. I don't know if he's in the room, but he's also a local historian and he's been very helpful. So we appreciate his help. So if you see him, make sure to say thank you. We also really want to say thank you to the planning group. As I mentioned, this is our third annual year and it's really evolved each year. And this year, I think the planning group really committed. <laughs> they, they really put their whole heart into it. They really tried to think what the membership and the community really wants, tried to find something for everybody, rearranged the schedule so we'd have more time together as a group, some more time with workshops, hands-on things. So we want to say, say a special thank you to each of them, and I'm going to embarrass them by making them stand up as I say each of their names. Not all of them are here, but the ones who are, please stand. Lisa Callahan from University of Minnesota. Thanks. Joanna Carl from Harvard. In the back. Uh, Celia Cost Ellen Borgen from Swarthmore College. Who's standing in the corner, helping as we speak. <laughs> Maggie Hughes from UCLA. Yeah. Sue Lefshin from University of Southern California. See, it's because I said people weren't here, that they're all here. It's great. <laughs> Jamie Margolotti from University of Delaware. Ah, in the corner again, see, volunteering even as we speak. Jenny Mitchell, Louisiana State University. Back there. Elizabeth Russell, University of Maine. We hit the first one. Okay. Thank her when you see her. Uh, Linda Sellers, North Carolina State University. Again, volunteering in the back there our special group. Mariella, what a beautiful name. Soprano, another good name, from Caltech. <laughs> Kelly Spring from UC Irvine. Not here. And, of course, Christine DeBella <laughs> from Archive Space. Can we please all give them a, a huge round of appreciation? Thanks so much to you, because it really wouldn't happen without you, and I think we'll all appreciate it. I also wanted to give some introductions on the Archive Space team. We've had some changes this year, so I wanted to make sure you knew who everybody was. I'm not going to make them stand. <laughs> uh, Christine DeBella, who many of you already know from her former community role, is now the program manager. We're so excited to have her in this new role. I'm always impressed with Christine's commitment and dedication to archive space. She's always thinking, how do we improve the program? How do we make it easier? How do we think about all the different kinds of members and how they are able to participate and get involved? So we're thrilled to have her in this new role where she can take even more of a management role in helping the community. Also very pleased to have with us for six months now our new tech lead, Lainey McGlohan, which I always mispronounce. <laughs> Um, we're thrilled to have her on board. She came from Stanford and before that, the Getty. She's one of those people that we appreciate every day. Her role is really to care and feeding and long-term sustainability of the technology. And every time we're facing something, Lainey has exactly the right attitude. She always thinks, what is the right thing to do? Not what's the easiest thing to do, <laughs> what's the short-term thing to do, but what's the right thing to do? So I always appreciate as she's thinking through it might take a little longer, might be a little harder, but it's going to be the right thing. And our newest addition, Christine Kim. Yay! <laughs> um, 
She is our new community engagement coordinator. Most recently, she's come to us from UC Irvine, where she did a ton with archival um, processing and uh, collections, but also community. We've found her to be very creative and lots of energetic ideas, so we're curious to see how that'll play out and the ideas she'll have for the community. And next year, she'll be the one corralling the group in here. We were especially... Fitbit does not want to stay on. We were especially pleased that the timing worked out for her to be here. She's been on the job two whole weeks. So please try not to scare her with super hard questions, because I think she's afraid that somebody's going to try to stump her. But she's eager to learn, so she'll get the answer soon. She just won't know the answers to everything today. So all of us are happy to get feedback about the program, and as is the program committee. So if you have kind thoughts or suggestions for next year, we're always happy to hear those. That's it for the welcome and the introductions. Next, Christine is going to be doing a program overview. She'll talk a little bit about what's happened last year, what's going to happen next year, and then the team will be happy to answer questions. Hi, everybody. So as Lori said, uh, thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, it's our third member forum, and maybe I'm the only like static piece of the Archive Space team since then, uh, but it, it's so great to see how things have grown and changed even in this short period of time. Uh, and we know you have a lot of options today here in Portland, both professional and personal, uh, and thank you for making some time for the forum here today uh, among them. Uh, I also want to thank the people who are not here today uh, but are joining us via the live stream. Uh, this is the first time that we are offering portions of the member forum uh, via that via a live stream. Uh, this is in recognition that there are so many members of our community distributed throughout the world uh, who can't necessarily be here for a face-to-face -face meeting um, but still have a, a great deal of interest uh, in what goes on here. Uh, so thank you to those of you who have also carved time out of your day back at home uh, to join us. So uh, as you know, it's been you know, a real year of transition uh, in the Archive Space program. Uh, as Lori said, our, our team has essentially completely changed from this time last year. Some of us are completely new, some of us are new in our roles, uh, and, and so we really do appreciate uh, you sort of sticking with us you know, through all these transitions. Uh, we made a pretty dramatic change uh, in the way development gets considered and, and done uh, and accomplished uh, with the addition of Laney as our tech lead this year. Uh, and we also benefited really tremendously uh, from our development partnership with Hudson Malonglo. Uh, as Laney came on board and got to know the application better and got to know our community, uh, we didn't have to slow down on the development side. We could keep pushing ahead. So we're really appreciative of that. Uh, with all those transitions, it's been a real opportunity for us to work with you, uh, take stock of where we've been, uh, and think about where we want to go for the future. Um, but, as I said, we didn't want to lose the momentum uh, that we know that you want and need. Uh, despite all the transitions, I'd say we did accomplish a lot over the last year as both a community and a program. Uh, and we're actually producing an annual report for the first time this year uh, that's going to highlight a number of the accomplishments uh, that we've had. Uh, we're aiming for this to be a thoughtful and lively document that will help us both celebrate what's been done uh, and also make help those of you who sometimes still struggle with your institution to make the case for why the heck would you pay for, you know, to be part of an open source membership community. Uh, this annual report will be one of the things we want to help you to continue to make that case uh, with. Uh, and I'll just mention some of the highlights here uh, in my presentation today. Uh, so you saw a number of changes, a number of, number of things growing in the application. Uh, we had two major releases over the last year, and we also had four minor releases. 
Probably the most anticipated thing around Archive Space Land is the release of our new public user interface. You'll be hearing a good amount about that here today at the forum. Uh, we are very happy uh, that we were able to get it released before the forum so that you can start uh, learning and, and implementing and talking with people about it. Uh, we also, in this last release, it has a starter OAI PMH responder to make it easier for you to uh, get data in and out of archives, well, get data out, in, out, out of archive space, harvest it for use in other applications that you use for discovery of your materials. Uh, we have enhanced rights management in this, uh, this new version of archive space, uh, better compliance with premise, uh, better ways to atomize, uh, atomize uh, your rights statements, link them into particular, uh, particular materials. Uh, all three of these things that I'm mentioning could not have happened without tremendous contributions from members uh, in writing specifications, in providing feedback on what was needed, in leading the efforts on the development side on, in some cases of those. These are all really amazing member accomplishments. Uh, we also remediated some issues with reports. As many of you, uh, of you know, reports have been a long standing issue with the application. Uh, we're making progress on that. We didn't get quite as far as we would have liked this year, uh, but it's a very high priority for next year. And you'll be hearing more about that here at the forum today as well. Uh, and something that is less glamorous but absolutely essential uh, is that we worked on, especially with Hudson Malonglo, worked on the underlying technologies of the application, improving them, getting them more up to date with what they need to be paying down technical debt of things where things were done because it was the quickest or most expedient way to get it done, uh, but had some repercussions for kind of the long-term growth of the application. We've been addressing a lot of those issues over the last year as well. We heard your feedback about wanting to know what's coming next and where things are in the queue of work for development. Uh, so we produced and we continue to update uh, and will continue to update that uh, at, uh, technology and development roadmap. And the intent of this is to outline several re releases ahead, um, sort of what kinds of functionality is being considered, uh, what kinds of bug fixes are being noted, uh, all these kinds of things so that you have an idea looking a little bit further ahead uh, than just when the release comes out of what the intent is. Uh, we also, in that roadmap, are representing sort of the different stages, the different, all the different things that contribute towards development. Something doesn't just suddenly appear in the application. There's a lot of work that goes into getting it into the application. Uh, and that includes, you know, identifying the need, writing specifications, uh, working on, uh, you know, working directly with developers to get code into the application and testing. Uh, Oh, sometimes endless testing uh, of things once they're in the application. So the, the roadmap is intended to represent all those different phases of what's done. Uh, we've also heard you uh, about that you want to understand JIRA, our development catalog, better. Uh, maybe you don't want to understand it better, but you, but you know that it's where we're tracking development and you want to understand the process by which things get in there and how things are tracked through there. Uh, so we've made some improvements to some of the workflows. Lainey has been especially involved in this. Uh, and we're going to be uh, announcing more about that soon as well. Laney, uh, in conjunction with folks from our Technical Advisory Council, also worked on a number of processes, policies, and tools this year to encourage code contributions. Uh, we've had this wonderful relationship with Hudson Longlow that has helped us get uh, a good amount of development into the application. Uh, but we also want to make faster and farther progress on development and have multiple streams of development going on. Uh, so one of the ways that to do that is to get as many people involved as possible and excited about getting involved uh, in working on code and in, on the application as possible. Uh, so Lainey's been doing a lot with that, especially with members of our Technical Advisory Council. Uh, so our GitHub presence has been substantially reorganized. Uh, 
Lainey has also worked on a code con contributor's guide that sort of outlines the expectations and the process uh, for contributing code to the application. Uh, and she's also recruited and convened a new core committers group that was announced recently. And it features five incredibly uh, talented and dedicated developers from our community uh, who are going to work with her on a range of activities to get more people involved uh, and help us get more quality code into the application. Uh, we also, uh, on the user side, of course, because it's not just code that makes up archive space. It's a, it, it's a, it's a user application. Users are the, the focus of why we get all this into the application. Uh, so we helped a lot of people learn to use archive space this year uh, and help people help each other uh, through online resource, expanded online resources and through face-to-face -face training. Uh, as much as possible, we want to continue to lower the barriers to using the application uh, and help empower more people to see themselves as power users capable of sharing their hard and earned knowledge and skills with the community overall. So looking ahead, uh, for all these areas, as you would imagine, we have big plans uh, for the coming year. Uh, our renewed commitment, I would say, uh, is to both adding functionality to the application, on the application side at least, adding functionality uh, as well as making what's already there better and easier to use. So some of the things we're going to be focusing on this year is making archive space easier to install and maintain. Uh, we're also going to be finally getting reports where they need to be. Uh, we're going to be updating the AT and Archon migration tools uh, so that you can uh, upgrade. If you're still in Archivist Toolkit or you're still in Archon, uh, that you can upgrade closer to a, a, a recent version of archive space than is currently possible. Uh, and then two things you'll be hearing about later this morning uh, are revamping the agents module for fuller EAC CPF and MARC authority support, as well as, as, well as synchronization with external databases, uh, and a staff interface working group that now that we've got the PUI, hopefully, a little bit better under control. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to the staff interface, the place where so many of you are spending so much of your time. Uh, and Lydia Tang is going to be talking about that effort. Uh, we're also very excited. Uh, one of the things that we're also doing with the roadmap is sort of identifying places where uh, we are looking to for help from the community uh, to get particular functions or features into the application. Uh, and we're really excited that, that some people in the community have already sort of heard our call uh, and, and you know, stepped forward uh, to contribute different pieces to the application. Uh, so in this next year, um, relatively soon actually, probably within the next few months, uh, you're going to be seeing an assessment module uh, based on a community specification that Dan Santa Maria and Adrian Pruitt at Tufts University are spearheading uh, the development for. The development itself is going to be done by Hudson Longlow, uh, and it's going to be paid for by Tufts. So thank you to Tufts for that. Uh, and also, uh, we're going to put in the first measure of EAD3 support into the application. Uh, Noah Huffman at Duke, Duke University and uh, Trevor Thornton at North Carolina State University uh, are working closely together. Trevor on the development side, uh, no, on more sort of the functional side of building an EAD3 exporter so that you will be able to not just get valid EAD 2002 out of archive space, but also valid EAD3 out of archive space. From there, we see that then as a, a platform to build in additional kinds of EAD3 support. So this is just a first measure of support, uh, but we're very excited that members of the community have stepped up to provide that. Uh, and if your institution is interested in getting involved with contributing or subsidizing code contributions, please get in touch with Lainey and me. We'd love to talk with you about different projects that the community has already prioritized. Uh, on an individual level, uh, maybe you're, you know, maybe it would be hard for you to speak on behalf of your institution or uh, your institutional commitment is at a different level. Uh, but if, as an individual, you're interested in contributing code to the application, if you want to learn how to, if you know or you want to learn how to code for archive space, we want to help you do that. Uh, and Lainey and the co core committers group are going to be making available a number of resources and information about that soon. 
We also, uh, on the user side, again, archive space is not just code. Uh, on the user side, we're going to be providing many, many more opportunities this year to learn and share as a community. Um, Kim, our new community engagement person, is going to be hugely involved with this. So if you have ideas of things that you'd like to see or things that you'd like to participate in, things that you'd like to contribute, Kim's the person to talk to. She's got fabulous ideas on her own, and you all are going to only help make them better. Uh, so be on the lookout for a new blog and webinar series. Uh, be on the lookout for additional face-to-face -face and online events. Uh, be on the lookout for opportunities uh, for peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and networking. Uh, our registered service provider, Atlas Systems, is also going to be working with us to provide some new training options. Uh, so all these kinds of things to help you help each other and share the knowledge, all the amazing things that you've learned to do and learned to create with Archive Space. We want you to share them with others. Uh, we're also participating in a number of multi-institution projects in the coming year. Uh, we know that Archive Space is strongest when it's considered uh, as part of the ecosystem of tools, systems, and standards that people use to preserve and make their collection materials accessible. And so we're excited by many opportunities that have come up for us to work with affiliated projects and organizations. Uh, so some that in particular we're going to be working with this year are the OSS ArcFlow project uh, based at University of North Carolina, uh, spearheaded by Educopia. Uh, that's work looking at workflows between Archivematica, BitCurator, and ArchivesSpace that people are using for born digital materials. Uh, we're also going to be continuing uh, our partnership with the SNAC project, uh, Social Networks in Context. Uh, one of the focuses of the uh, agents module revamp is going to be greater synchronization between SNAC uh, and better ways, easier ways to create records for SNAC and take records from SNAC to put into archive space. And then there's also a project based at Lyricis. It's an IMLS-funded project. Uh, titled It Takes a Village, uh, which is looking at different open source software governance models uh, and getting convening something like 25 different open source projects uh, to talk about what's working, what isn't working, what are some ways that we can collaborate for our user communities and make things better. Uh, so look for more information about that in the coming year as well. Um, so, I've mentioned where we've been, I've mentioned where we're going. Uh, I also want to take a few minutes just to celebrate where we are right now. Uh, our membership community is four years old now, and I, I think it's really hitting its stride. We have 330 members representing 10 different countries, uh, 46 different states, uh, and really just about every kind of archives you can think of. Uh, and considering that in 2013, uh, we this started out with 54 charter members. That's a pretty amazing place to be. Uh, and, you know, I sound like a broken record, but it's absolutely true that the progress that we make in archive space, it's only possible through the many big and small ways uh, that all of you as members participate and contribute. So thank you for all your contributions, uh, regardless of what they are, regardless of how big they feel to you or how small they feel to you, they're all appreciated. I did want to mention uh, some folks that have been involved in more formal roles with Archive Space over the last year and are now uh, stepping down from those roles or transitioning into, into something else. Uh, not all of them are here today, uh, but those of you who are here, I'm going to embarrass you and make you come up uh, for just a minute uh, so we can all recognize you that way. Uh, we have four of our governance board members who recently com completed terms. Uh, these include Brian Schottlander uh, from uh, UC San Diego. Uh, UC San Diego is one of the three partners of Archive Space. Brian had been involved from the inception, uh, and he is now retiring from UC San Diego and is stepping down from most of his Archive Space commitments, though he's been held on for a few things. Uh, so thank you to him uh, for everything that he did in the last four plus years. Uh, thank you also to Jay Gabemore from College of William and Mary, uh, who is stepping down from the governance board after a four-year, two two-year terms on the governance board. Uh, we really appreciate his contributions. 
as well as Christian DuPont of Boston College and Tom Adams of Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, uh, who are coming down off of a, a two-year term on the board. Uh, we also have both of our councils, so our advisory councils, our technical advisory council, and our user advisory council are, you know, such important parts of, of our member participation. Uh, really kind of lead the member effort in many different areas uh, and provide so much guidance to the program team. Uh, the chairs of both of the councils are stepping down this year. Uh, Gordon Danes after four years of service and Sally Vermotten after two years of service. She's now moved to a, a, a non-member institution that doesn't use archive space. But we're very thankful to her for sticking on for a, cu a couple more months. Um, so thank you to both Gordon and Sally uh, for all their leadership of the councils over this these last few years. Uh, thank you also to our technical advisory council members who recently completed terms. Uh, these are Esme Cowles from Princeton University, Noah Huffman from Duke University, Chris Prom from the University of Illinois, and Michael Vandermillen of Harvard University. Uh, TAC has, has made amazing strides in both you know, the, the actual technology of the application as well as making it easier for people to get in and out of archive space uh, from a technological standpoint, as well as uh, learning more about how to actually contribute code to archive space. Uh, so we really appreciate everything that they've done. And then the first person who actually has to be embarrassed and come up here because she's here. Uh, so we have three of our uh, user advisory council members that are stepping down uh, after uh, after their terms, uh, in two cases, four-year terms. Uh, Nancy Enneking of the Getty Re Research Institute has been really sort of uh, leading the reports effort for quite a while now. Uh, and it hasn't been easy, as, as you would imagine. Uh, reports have been much more complicated than we ever would have expected. Uh, but we really appreciate everything that Nancy has done uh, to get them to where they are and to help us take the, take the next step with those. She, even though she's stepping down from her formal uh, term with the UAC, she is sticking around to help us like get reports to the finish line. So thank you so much, Nancy, for that. And come up, please, Nancy. So, and then Linda Hawking, who I believe is at SAA this week, but she may not be here today, uh, from Litchfield Historical Society, uh, really like got our user documentation sub team going, uh, really helped us with getting uh, the, you know, continuing to get the manual updated, continuing to identify new types of user documentation that needed to be produced. Uh, so thank you to Linda, and has also participated in a lot of different activities as part of the UAC as well. So thank you to Linda for everything that she's done as well, uh, as well as Brenda Burke from Clemson University, who is stepping down this year. Uh, and then the, the, the next set of people that I want to thank are the many, many, many people that have been involved in making our public user interface better, uh, and especially three people that are here today. And again, I'm sorry to embarrass you, but please come up to the front. Uh, Mark Custer from Yale University for his incredibly tireless leadership on something that was not easy, as you would expect. Uh, and all of you are reaping the benefits. <laughs> Susan Pazinski from Harvard University, uh, and uh, Corey Neimer from Brigham Young University, and Scott Schwartz from University of Illinois. Uh, an incredible amount of specification and testing and even testing up to the very last minute when the release went out last week uh, it has gone into making this available to you. And these three especially have been like your advocates for the public user interface for such a long time. So thank you to all three of them for everything that they have done. And this person, I don't have a certificate for him because he's already gotten some things, um, but I do want to embarrass him and make him come up. 
And that's Brad Westbrook, our founding program manager. And as you know, the person who is probably the most associated with archive space, the person who when I'm on a conference table and he's not there says, where's the archive space guy? Brad. For <laughs> so for everything that he's done to make archive space. So, and then, cheesy, but one more, just thank you, all of you uh, who are here today, who are listening on the live stream, who are back at home working away and aren't able to be here or out in Portland doing other cool stuff right now. Uh, thank you, all of you, uh, for all your support as we continue to help Archive Space grow and evolve together. Uh, we do look forward to many exciting developments in the year ahead, uh, and we look forward to working with you to achieve them. So for the rest of this portion of the program, the program team is up here. We're here for you to ask whatever questions you want to ask of us. Uh, you can, and you don't necessarily have to just ask questions. If you have comments, uh, if you want to share information with others that are here, you're welcome to do so. Uh, the only thing that I would say is try to, try to speak loudly, uh, and we will um, you know, repeat your question into the mic for people at home. Oh, and we maybe are going to get a mic up here for you to even speak into. Don't all run. <laughs> Go ahead, Jordan. Talk into the mic. So. And I should say, any questions? Yeah, so first of all, just in the interest of brevity, great job. You guys are doing a great job. Okay, thank you to everyone else. Um, I've shared these comments privately with Christine, but I thought I'd just kind of get them out there in the group. Um, I'm really um, thankful and impressed that Tufts is willing to um, basically commit resources to developing this assessment module. I really like conceptually like this idea of an institution that has capacity and commitment to be able to build these things, to be able to take the time to do it. The one concern that I do have about a single institution developing a program is um, the possibility that the features that emerge uh, may include particular features that are bespoke to that institution. So I don't think what I'm saying is particularly controversial. Everybody's nodding their heads, but it's just something to be mindful of that as Tufts develops the use cases, developing the module, and as we explore this um, strategy with other institutions, because I'm sure other institutions in the future, is to make sure that like whatever's being contributed to that core code um, is really um, the functionality is for the benefit for uh, a range of users of archive space and not um, tailor-made for a specific institution. Having said that, you know, I want it to end on a positive note. Great job, and I'm really glad about the Tufts project. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, and I'll just say, and Lainey can maybe even talk about it from the development side too. So in the case of both the assessment module that Tufts is subsidizing uh, and the EAD3 ex uh, exporter that Duke and North Carolina State are working on, uh, they're both working directly from specifications that were developed in the community, that were vetted through the community. Uh, Tufts has, has been... An, a, has been very clear about not wanting to add things that are specific to Tufts or that reflect sort of quirks of a workflow in a particular institution. Uh, but the way the specification was written, it's, it's archived, so of course everybody has to have some kind of uh, latitude in it. Uh, the way the specification was written was that for all institutions, there would be a certain number of reserved essentially user-defined fields uh, so that each, in, each institution could customize uh, the assessment uh, module a little bit to their own specifications. But by and large, absolutely, Jordan, we're very committed to uh, not reproducing uh, idiosyncrasies of particular institutions uh, in archive space. We want to accommodate a lot of different ways that people do work 
uh, but we don't want to reinforce things that are particular to one institution. So that's definitely one of the things that we're evaluating uh, when people are presenting things to us for consideration for the core code, or when people are talking to us about kinds of projects that they might get involved in uh, either developing or subsidizing development for. But I think that's great to, to keep that and make sure that we stay honest about that, absolutely. I think that the core committers group is going to help with that as well. The core committers group is um, across different institutions. We try to make sure we spread that out as best we could. Um, and I'm hoping that as we start developing more code, if we get, can get more people involved, um, you guys can look at it and see better if there's something that's not going to quite work with your institution or if something, you know, snuck in by mistake that's more idiosyncratic to a specific institution, we're hoping that um, by having a variety of people in the core committee group, that'll help because that is the group that's going to be doing a lot of the code reviews and making sure that, that those kinds of things don't happen. But we also are looking forward to other people getting involved so that you can also help us make it so that we don't do that and don't accidentally have things come through. And I think that's a plea for people to participate in the requirements process. Yes. Because that's where you really want everyone's voice to be heard. Right. Other questions or comments? I will say this is amazing to me because I, this is maybe the first time there has ever been fewer questions than there was time allotted for questions. Uh, so go ahead. Yep, come on up. Hi, Kim. This question is for you. I'm curious to hear more about what you're interested in doing with community development and training programs. So if you could talk a little bit about what your interests are and what the plan is that maybe you have not developed yet in your first two weeks, but are thinking forward to. Yeah, thank you. So um, I'm two weeks in, so I'm still at a point where I'm trying to get to know all of the resources that are already available, but I really see my role in trying to really highlight what all of the community members are doing, all 330 members of you. And I know that each institution is using archive space in a unique way. And one of the big projects on my radar is I would love to launch a blog series that really highlights all the use cases of each of the institutions. So I'll be reaching out to to all of you <laughs> to see if there are any if there's any interest in participating in that. Um, so I'd really love to highlight and elevate the voices of the members in that way. Um, and in addition, I'd love to also figure out how to better communicate what's happening on the development side in terms of what the Archive Space Project team, a uh, program team is doing, in terms of how Laney is working with developers and what type of work is underway. So that's something really big on my radar. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. Pay no attention to the number. But also, if you have ideas, yes. she's here. And Kim is going to be working in the very near future uh, on some uh, additional um, video resources on our site, including an a updated demo uh, of the full application, including the new public user interface, uh, some resources that help you understand you know, some of the different tools um, that we use, uh, like JIRA, uh, things like that to help direct people through that way. Uh, and she is absolutely going to be harnessing uh, and encouraging participation in any of those efforts. Uh, so if you have ever wanted to, if you've ever wondered why there wasn't a thing and you think there should be that thing, we would love to get you involved in creating, producing that thing. Um, there's going to be a lot of more, more of that in the coming year. If there aren't any more questions, 
Um, we could break a little bit early. Uh, the next thing on the program uh, is a, an update on the public user interface. Uh, and we can maybe get take about five minutes to get that all set up. You can go back and get some coffee if you want, uh, things like that. We will be around, obviously, all day today. Uh, there is a community session uh, at uh, in the early part of the afternoon at 1 o'clock uh, that Kim and Lori and I will be involved in. Uh, if you have questions for us specifically and you want to talk more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that would be a place that you could do that. Uh, we'll also, of course, be around SAA all week. Uh, you can find us in the exhibit hall. Uh, you can, um, uh, we'll, we'll be at a number of sessions during the week, so there'll be plenty of time to, to catch us if you have particular questions or if you want to talk with us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but thank you for being here uh, to start off the program today. Uh, and like I said, come back in five minutes and hear about the public user interface.